Uncle Harold's going to tell us all about his power hacksaw. Power saw with a 12 inch blade. <coughs> a lift out of the way saw, so it's easy access for lining up the job. Back down again. And if it's plugged in, shall I plug it in? Oh yes please. You notice round yeah. pins. That's a five amp round pin plug. It's a five amp is this. Yeah. It's all round pins and So that was a little bit of original footage from the video and we've got better lighting now. Bear in mind this saw was built when Uncle Harold was an apprentice so it was basically during wartime so they used whatever they've got because materials were needed uh, they were in high demand for other more important things so this was bits and pieces hence the base is made out of timber and I can fully understand why otherwise be big lumps of metal there's the motor and wheels off a child's toy or something and those are probably 1930s wheels or even earlier pressed steel with a rubber tyre and the thing that we were talking about in the video were these worm gears. There's a worm and pinion gear there as, as a secondary reduction. So you've got reduction there between the motor and that first pulley, then reduction there. And it was just use what you've got, the ingenuity of it. And of course on the end of that pinion there there's a grease nipple or I think in America they call them zerks and then the clamp for the workpiece which as Harold explained that knot there means that this can go at whatever angle you want so let's just have a go at that so this is 1932 AF. Oh, there you go. Let's move this out of the way. And then there's a, a knot under here. Same size. So you undo that. And then this will move. And that passes it to about there I wonder what's uh, and that's just a hole it's, oh it's a slot let's see what's uh, going on that's just a square plate and that comes off so you've got a slot there and a bolt there so the workpiece clamp is removable that's interesting that could do with a bit of oil could that. Is that the right way around? I think so. So then it would just want squaring up with the saw to make sure the clamp's dead square. And there you go. 
homemade adjustable work clamp. Particularly handy if you're cutting box section for a frame. So then the next thing I want to point out, I'll do it there, is the rise and fall. So we don't have to cut all the way through the metal if we don't want to, we can adjust it here. And there's a clamp bolt there, so when you've adjusted it you tighten it up. I think Harold did say quite a lot about the fact that you can lift this right out of the way. And then let's just have a look at the blade. As you can see it's a bigger blade that's been cut down. I'll turn the saw around. So there we go. There's the blade and you see that notch that's been cut out. And this end has been warmed up to soften it so you can drill a hole in it. And in amongst the bits, I don't know whether we've got that fully in there. Let's just see. There were these big blades. There was a pile of them. And the other half of that one, all made up and ready. That ends ground, that ends warmed up, ground and drilled. So let's just start the, uh, the saw up, then move those out of the way first. It goes reasonable speed, doesn't it? Let's put a bit of steel in there, see what it does. Look at the another of his machines. Carry on, Harold. Well, the, uh, the, this is now traversing that. Ah, yes, way. we can so see that. It can be changed over, come back to travel back the yes. other way. So let's just see the ratchet if we can get the ratchet. I can see it now. That's perfect, and we've got a lot better light this time. So what do you want now? Then? I can just to... see it. No, it's all right. Now it's going the other way now, look. Traversing the other way now, look. Uh, let's so it's just automatic, you just put the job in. Right. So that was a clip from the, the original video. And the shaping machine is now here at home, out in the light. And we're just looking at some of these gears. So that is the primary drive there that goes through to the back of the shaper. And that primary drive drives this gear. And as we turn it round, there's an adjustment there. And that will be for the stroke. If we look the other side, there's some handwriting and some marks for adjusting the stroke of the crank which of course adjusts the stroke of the cutter but the fascinating thing we had when we were in the workshop in Uncle Harold's workshop was 
the traversine drive and now we're out in the light and there's really only one reason why this machine is here and not in Harold's workshop so but it comes to us all so let's have a look at the uh, traversing drive and we're just on handheld camera here that's that gear we were looking at which is on the primary drive and on the crank and next to it if we can see there we go there's another gear and that's an idler gear and it drives this here and it drives this here so this is a form of a crank there's a pin that sticks out the back of this idler gear that drives this let's just see if I can um, it's a bit wobbly but you can see that's moving backwards and forwards let's see if we can get it from a different angle so the pin is that square thing there and that's connected to the gear wheel and as this gear wheel rotates and because the pin is offset from centre it makes this move backwards and forwards and here's it working that there is adjustment and that's just causing that to go backwards and forwards which drives the ratchet so now this here is the traverse it moves this is the thread that drives the the work across the cutter and And here we have this is connected to that and this is an idler but it's geared together and then the poles are sprung loaded and there are two of them there's another one here and effectively this little lever here pushes that one down and lets that one drop in and then that does that and lets that one drop in so let's just start her up because we're out in the light now we can actually see it working and if you see the, the back one is lifted up and then if we do that this then goes the other way around Looking at this, it is made out of this, that, and the other. Whatever was available at the time. Seems to work though. And it won't focus on it. It's, it's struggling out, you see. Yeah. In everything, in those days, they were big products, heavy. Everything went by rail. 
so we had all the yards set up with rails, rail, uh, railway lines. We had steam cranes and everything. Did you? Oh yeah. Right. Steam cranes, local, big steam engine to drive the works. Yeah. You know, with a <coughs> twenty-foot flywheel type of thing. Ah. Big massive thing. That we had, was running the line. We shaft, had all was steam it? pumps and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. It was all steam. Right. Hydraulic. We had loads of hydraulics. Steam, hydraulics, and compressed air. Right. And because the compressed air was produced by steam, was it? Uh, by steam. Yes. Well, a lot of it was produced by electric motors, actually. Oh, was it? Yeah, the comp. Oh, one big compressor uh, was driven off the big engine. Yeah. With a massive flywheel. But then compressors around the works in s to serve smaller areas were driven by electric motors. Oh. oh. And so was this, this little steam shunting engine... Oh, yeah, was that's... there a lot of maintenance on that then? Uh, not a right lot really, but it often used to come off the rails. On We had loads of sharp bends within the works and it was known to come off the rails and so we had to set to unjack it back on. Right. <laughs> that's a regular thing. <laughs> so it, it was it narrow gauge then? No, it was full railway gauge. Oh, was it? Because, oh yes, because it, it had to take the trucks out onto the main line. Oh right, so it was a big, quite a big heavy engine then. Oh yeah, yeah. 40, 50 tonnes at least. Oh no, it wasn't that big. No. It, oh no, it, it was small in comparison because within the yard we had sharp bends. Yeah. And you could only have a small wheelbase to get ah, those sharp bends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it did the job. Right. I mean, it could take a train of wagons. Oh, right. And, and to get the wagons on the main line, they had to be pushed onto a turntable yeah. to then go on the main, uh, on the sidings, yes. to be fed onto right. the main line. So you could only put a few trucks on at a time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And did this, this... But they could be shunted by the cranes or by the locals. Right. Because the cranes had to lift the stuff onto the trucks. Yes. And then that would damp, perhaps shunt them onto right. the lines. Yeah. And then the the local would probably then take up the lines to get them into the main area to be picked up by yeah. whatever yeah 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 and of course we there were loads of loads of other works down the yard and our local served all their uh, trucks as well yeah. all so, their wagons as well so it had a dedicated driver then it had a dry it had one driver, one driver for, yeah, yeah. It had one driver yeah. right yeah but I imagine so it was it was running uh, a lot of the time during the week. Oh yes, yes it was running all the week. Right. Yes. Oh, first thing in the morning, the driver would come and light the fire. Well, the, or the shunter man yeah. would come and light the fire, and then they'd sit around for a couple of hours while it all got steam up, and then they'd take it out. Oh right. Right. right yeah, and yeah. And then they'd knock off at lunchtime, just you know, as part of their shunting operation. Yeah. And they were at it all day, every for five days a week. Right. They weren't there on Saturdays. Yeah. So did they light the fire every morning? Then? Every morning, oh yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, it was still warm from the day before. Ah, yeah. But it needed stoking oh, up yeah. to get the steam yeah. up to pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so obviously there's all the oiling of all the bearings and everything, you know, filling all the little hoppers up with oil every morning. Well, yeah, the local driver saw to that, yeah. you see, because he had a routine of what to do as a routine maintenance. Yeah. But we had to maintain that everything was in order. Because it was vital to the whole the whole thing. Well, if if you so couldn't move your trucks. To, because everything was done on wagons. Yeah. And that had to be moved around. Right. Yeah. And stuff was going out. Yeah, and it was all heavy stuff, as in, you said. Oh, yeah. In fact, when I was in India, we... we went into Bombay and in the sidings in Bombay there were all our products stood on, 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 wag on uh, trucks, yes. on uh, railway wagons. Right. <laughs> I was <laughs> amazed to see them all there. When when were you in India then? 1944 and 5. So that was the tail end of the war then? Oh yeah. 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 We, were, we were waiting to go into Japan and the, the, the packed it in. Did they? So thank God they finished. Yes. <laughs> With that, we'll leave it. Thank you very much, Harold. That's brilliant. Have you recorded all that?